Alrighty, working on this, it's a 2008 BMW 528i, the E60 platform, needs brakes, uh, you know, got it, it's worn down to the point where it was making contact with the sensor, so the light was on. Um, it, it had some pulsation, so we're going to go ahead and do rotors. Um, with these, uh, there's a center jack point, uh, it has, you know, rubber pad on it, you can jack it up with that, stick your, uh, your jacks on the blocks. The plastic blocks where the lift points are. Uh, let's see. Let's look at the brakes. All right, uh, here they are. Uh, pads and rotors. Uh, TRQ. You know, I Chinese. I think these are Chinese. I think the pads are Taiwan. Um, it's not bought. Not bad. I want to say it was like 169 for pads and rotors. And another, I think, 17, 18 bucks for the sensor. So under 200 bucks for, you know, for a BMW is not bad. Um, would have preferred maybe to get like some power stops, but uh, they were a lot more expensive even through Rock Auto and uh, would have been a couple weeks before I had them. So I'm going to go with these. I've had good luck with this stuff before. Uh, not necessarily brakes, but I've done uh, wheel bearings and ball joints and stuff with them. Um, you know, they're fairly inexpensive in the... I forget it's like 1A Auto or something you order them from. They uh, they ship real quick, so that was really the name of the game here. Um, all right, well let's go take a look. All righty, lug nuts, 17 millimeter. They shouldn't be too tight. I think the factory is something like 87 foot pounds. I'm say 87, 89. I just had these off recently, so they should come off easily. All right, just pulled a uh, tire off, and of course the first thing I see here is a nail. Now, these weren't low or anything. I guess, I'm sorry, I guess that's a screw. It is leaking though. I don't have to fix that at work. So, oh well. So, a little peek behind the curtain here. Um, I do one side before I video the other side I just so that I know all the parts and everything work out and um, Especially if it's a vehicle. I'm not super familiar on that way. I can you know give you any tips or things to hang me up um, Here's our sensor And you can see where it just started to get into it turn that light on um, Look up here This is your box that houses the connector uh, it goes up and then goes down. Uh, part of it, this part right here, clips in right here. This part right here actually sna snugs onto the brake bleeder and holds it there. And this part slides into the pad. There's a little, uh, a little notch uh, for where it goes. So anyway, we'll get get finished getting this torn down. All right, here's our wire, our sensor. We got it stuck in. Let's see here. There's a slot in the top of the uh, pad. Swings around, goes under the cat or goes around the uh, the bleeder. Comes up. We've got it. Goes through here. You got a little uh, notch there in the top for that. Clicks in. Can't do it one handed. Let's switch hands. Okay, actually, did click. There we go. All right. And there it is. 
All right. All right, now I'm figuring out how we're going to do this. I got to occupy the same space as you, but pop this guy out. Um, all right, so really, as far as bolts, you've got a six, milli six millimeter here holding on the, uh, you know, hex, holding on the rotor. You've got two, let's see if I can reach back there and pull them off. You've got two seven millimeter um, caliper slide bolts, pins, you know, whatever. Um, they're seven millimeter hex as well. They're both covered up with little plastic covers. And then your actual caliper bracket is held on with an 18 millimeter. So all right, let's get to work. All right, got both those caps off. Um, and then what I like to do, let's get the, uh, let's get this turned. I like to get in here so I don't have to push the caliper in too far. I'm going to push against the rotor. Well, maybe, maybe not. There we go. Push against the rotor. Let's compress that caliper as much as we can so we don't have to use like a tool or anything to do it. This should get us most of the way there. I may, I may have to come in with a pair of pliers and pinch it the rest of the way. Um, but that's going to be it. I'm going to sneak in here with the 6 millimeter. No, I'm not. I'm going to sneak in there with a 7 millimeter. One. They're different sizes. Your um, so this is your bottom. Your bottom one is longer than the top. You know, so remember that. Oh, sorry. I don't know if you can see that. Your this is your bottom. That's your top. Your bottom one is longer than the top. Hang. Hang our caliper. So they do have like retention tabs. Um, the tabs on the inner one are smaller. Um, so they can be a little, uh, you know, a little bit of, a little tough to get out. Alrighty, so we got the pads out of our caliper. Now, we just need to peel off that bracket. That's going to be an 18. The bottom one, I can get to. Uh, three eighths with a three eighths uh, shallow. Well, thought I could. There we go. We got our bottom. The top. I don't think I can. Yeah, I can't get to that one. So the top will throw a ratchet on there. Man. Oh, she was tight. I don't know what the uh, torque rating is, but I I don't know that I've ever seen a uh, caliper bracket that was maybe more than like, you know, most of them around like 100, maybe 120.
All right, now what we need to do, just get inside of here where the, uh, the pad slide, we need to get this area cleaned. Just do it out here. I don't feel like dirtying my workbench anyway. Now, these are not that rusty, or actually really, there isn't any rust on them at all. Um, so if the, if, you know, if you live in the Northeast or, you know, someplace where they salt the roads, you'd probably want to come in here with, um, you know, a file or something or sandblast, something like that, because oftentimes with a brush, all you'll end up doing is basically just shining up the rust. Like I said, you can tell that these really have no rust on them at all. A little toot of the good stuff which we are dangerously low on. All right. So now, coming here with our brake grease. Um, I don't know, I use the purple stuff. There's lots of different kinds of stuffs. Um, that's what I use, I've never had an issue, but I also don't live in a harsh environment. So, you know, your mileage may vary. A lot of tribalism with grease, so. And whatever whatever you want to use um, I want to say these brakes actually came with some grease uh, but you know I can just dip my little brush in the grease I, my little can I have um, yeah lots of tribalism so. all right got this all greased up we'll go throw it back on so, we can't throw it on we got to uh, take this rotor off Like I said, this is a six millimeter right here. And she popped right off. Didn't even have to tickle it. We'll come. Again, this car has almost no rust on it, or has no rust on it. Um, we'll clean this up. A little spritz. Call that good. Um, again, in my climate, I'm not gonna grease it or anything like that. I don't need to go get the new rotor. All right, got our rotor. Now it is gonna be a little bit of a dance. Of course, I'm getting my greasy fingers all over it to hold it up against the hub. There we are. Now we'll throw our bracket back on. Give her a little torque the other way. <sighs> now they were smoked all the way to Alabama. I'm not sure, like I said, what the torque actually is. Give her about a hundred. All right. So we once again are going to need to occupy the same space here. Um, I can't see what I'm doing right now because you're staring at the caliper. But I will put a little bit of grease on the pads where they hit the um, piston. Uh, now I believe, although I don't care enough to really uh, pull it out and look at it, but I believe this is a phenolic 
caliper piston. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's do this. What are we gonna do? All right, I'm gonna put the old pad in real quick. I'm gonna grab it. We'll see how see how much further we may go down. All right, so we can get a little bit more in there. All right, so that might have been pretty tight if we had not done that. So we'll stick our uh, the one with the smaller prongs. They go against the piston. And then our pad with the larger goes on uh, the other part of the caliper. Got it in there. All right, through a little lube on our caliper slide pins. bottom our bottom one is the longer one if we remember and I hope we do just gotta find it but these usually are not all that tight we don't, we don't, we don't get them all right, let me see what you can see. All right, last part. This, uh, I mean, I guess you'd just call it some kind of like anti-rattle uh, clip. You want to get the two under. Well, hmm. So there's a little divot right there that rides in. And it does seem a little shallow. Give her a little tickle. See if we can't maybe bend that back just a hair. Yeah, that ain't gonna stay in there. I don't want that popping off and dragging in the wheel. Um, we could get it to where your little tab is in there. There we go. All right. Well, she's all together. Last thing we got to do, we'll give her a little clean off. Find the clean side of our rag here. All righty, she is ready. Get the wheel back on. Oh, you spun me.
Click her up to two, give her a little. All right, I expect that's probably it. 50 or so foot pounds. We'll lower the car down so that the wheels are just kissing and then we'll come in torquing. All right, I went and checked. Our torque is actually 88 foot pounds. And I need to bring it down just a little bit more. First, star pattern. Then we will circle one more time. All right, I'll do the other side and it'll be set. All right, well, it's Saturday. I won't be able to go to work till Monday to fix my tire. So, well, it's already down to 27 pounds. The tire will take 50. So that's what I'm going to do. We'll bump it up, and then I'll check it again Monday morning before I go to work. Um, I drive, drive about 50 miles to work, so I don't want to. Don't want to have any issues. Um, the tire would typically take 36 pounds per the door, front and rear. So we'll. Bring her up to 50, and uh, hopefully we'll be all right for the rest of the weekend. So what alerted us to the issue is one, um, when you start it up, there's a service required light that comes on. We got a brake, and then the engine, even though there's not an engine code, um, but there, you know, there is a code in there for the brakes. I got the uh, scan tool firing up auto scan it it's a 2008 so it's new enough so we need to reset that light there is a way uh you've got to like i think set that to the date and then hold down the button your trip button um and you can do it that way but i've got the scan tool here so we'll just we'll just do it this way this camera like, I don't know, I've got this thing almost up in my face just so you can see the whole screen here. I'll uh, see here, and we don't need to, I don't know if it's going to scan every module. We don't need to do that. We just need to go into the brakes. Actually, we could scan everything just clear it see what it does. Oh, there you go. I forgot it says it right there. So... Now, the astute among you will know that I am not the nearest BMW center, but I think we can handle it. Close this door so I don't have to hear the highway. Um, this, by the way, this is the Top Don Phoenix, maybe Phoenix Pro, something like that. Um, it's a really good scan tool. I really like it. Uh, what's smart? We'll say smart scan, maybe. Um, I like it. I, I want to say it's the same as like the Think Tool and the Launch. I want to say those run the same. Um, I, I, I love the topology. Um, it makes it handy knowing, you know, what's on what can lines. So, it's just nice being able to see it like this. Now I know that this thing has some codes for uh, like defro um, window fog sensor. Let's see what's an ECM. Mixture control, interesting. Uh, I don't know. Let's clear them. So ABS is still gonna show. All right, so what we'll probably have to do, I'll see if it'll give us a uh, switch hands here maybe uh burr, 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 burr. no we don't need that that's what i just hit all right so let's do this let's go home services oh cheese and crackers
end our diagnostic session. All right. Uh, so let's go services. Uh, bup, bup, bup. We'll go break. Say okay. Well, that's not what I wanted to do. All right, we'll uh, we'll come back and see. Uh, we'll get there. All right, our VCI has updated. BMW is on. Let's go automatic scan. All right, well, it took a while. We're back in here, so we're going to select. Let's see here. Uh, I can't remember if it's in replacement or five series. I want to say this might be pump controls. We are E60. Yeah, maybe it's not that one. I'm, I believe it's the other one. Brake maintenance, five series. 60. Front brakes. All right. So we are good. I guess this is the third time was that brakes put on it. I mean, it's not bad for 216,000 miles. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's on. Um, all of our error menus and it messages are gone. Um. So yeah, uh, this is my car. Um, I wouldn't have cleared. I would have printed out, out all those uh, messages. Mixture control. That's a new one. Um. Uh, you know, obviously something's happening. I guess it's running lean or rich or something. It does feel like when it's cold, um, you know, before everything's warmed up, like there's probably like an intake leak or something like that, if I had to guess. Maybe that's what that's all about. Um, but anyway, I uh, pumped up the brakes. After you do it, you want to make sure you do that a couple times because uh, they ain't going to work the first time you hit it. And we'll go take a little uh, test rip here. Um, we'll burnish in these pads. All right, so usually what I do is I do a, a long lap around my neighborhood. Um, and then I will come through out here and get out here on the big road. And the long lap, I'm doing lots of small, short, or, you know, uh, short braking points. Stop, short stops? I don't know. That's a position. Got out here on the big road. We'll kick her on up to whatever the speed limit is um, and then I do one I do one big break before I uh, pull into my neighborhood so I come right up here to the entrance start getting on the brakes make sure they feel good no pulsing slowly apply a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more you know we wonder what this truck's doing here could have gone about three times oh they're pulling a Yui okay well pull in go up I think I'm doxing myself right now and maybe we'll keep the maybe we'll keep the camera down do another little break here. We'll pull in. All right. Well, we're in. The brakes felt good. Um, no rattles. No squeaks, um, which they didn't seem like. They were, they were quality brakes. Um, you know, some things I guess I should have mentioned is, you know, your brakes need to fit and they need to slide freely. You know, when, when they're when they're resting on the caliper brackets, they need to move freely. You shouldn't need to be filing or anything like that. Um, those pads, I'd never used them before, but they had a nice, um, like, coated 
uh, anti uh, rattle anti squeal uh, shim on the back um, and then they included those new uh, anti rattle clips in the front so that was nice um, so yeah they seem like quality brakes um, they were uh, ceramic so hopefully a little bit less dust I don't know what was on it here they seem to be decent brakes around here before I've never had any squeal or anything but my lights out it's not staring at me anymore um, so that's nice no pulsing the pedal everything's good all right